Hey everyone. Many people who start trying to learn about neural networking and machine learning will most likely come across this book written by Michael Nielsen. I've talked about it before and how it is a super helpful resource for someone trying to understand the inner workings of a neural network by guiding them through the development of a handwritten digit classifier. However, that neural network has a lot of interconnected neurons and that could be confusing for some people. I remember that when I started learning, it took me over a month to figure out all the math that was involved. So I began thinking about some simpler applications for neural networks, and of course, linear regression came to mind. So for the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to figure out how I can use neural networks to determine the line of best fit for a given set of data points. And in this video, I'm just gonna share that approach. When I started thinking about this problem, I had the idea to design my network to take in information about the data points such as the xy coordinates and output two values which would be the slope and the y-intercept of the linear equation. But there are some problems with this. For one, the network expects a specific number of coordinates in order to produce an equation. And for any given data set, we may lose the ability to utilize larger amounts of data or we just may not have enough data points. The other problem is that the relationship between the vectorized coordinates and the output parameters is not very obvious. So we need a lot of training data in order to get the network to figure out how to associate the two. The key insight here is remembering that the network itself is a function which takes in input values and spits out a result. Because of that, we can use a neural network to determine the xy relationship by training on individual points. For each coordinate, the network needs to take the x value, multiply it by a weight, and add a bias to produce a y value. So this two neural network is all we need to perform linear regression. The cost function can be expressed as the sum of the squares of the differences between the actual and predicted y values. We do this because the line of best fit minimizes the sum of the residual squared, which makes it a least squares regression line. As we carry out stochastic gradient descent, we just need to find the partial derivative of our cost function with respect to w and with respect to b. By applying the chain rule, we can easily find these derivatives as shown here. This will tell us how the value of our cost function changes depending on how we change the network parameter and how sensitive that change is. For example, if we take a derivative with respect to w and get a negative value, that means the cost function will increase if you decrease w. Of course, we want to minimize our cost function, so in this situation, we would increase w by a certain amount that depends on the magnitude of our derivative. This ensures that we don't overshoot the local minimum where our derivative is really close to zero. That's basically all there is to a neural network with this level of simplicity. Obviously, if you were to tackle more complex problems involving deeper hidden layers, a little more math is involved, but I think this is a simple example that gives beginners a good overall picture about what neural network training is all about. To demonstrate my idea, I'm going to be modifying Michael Nielsen's code so that I can instantiate a simplified version of a neural net. One thing to note is that the original code used sigmoid neurons in the network. Sigmoid neurons take in the weighted input from the previous layer and outputs a value between 0 and 1 using the sigmoid squishification function. However, I don't want this to happen because my output will take on a wide range of y values. On top of that, the weighted input is in the form of a linear equation and putting that through a sigmoid function will just mess up the results. So to fix this, I renamed the sigmoid function as the identity function, which will just return whatever you put in without any changes. In addition, the code used the derivative of the sigmoid function to apply the chain rule. But since we changed the sigmoid to an identity function, we must change sigmoid prime to the derivative of the identity function, which is just one, and we'll rename this method as identity prime. The next thing we need to do is modify the evaluate method. The purpose of this method is to measure how accurately a network performs on a given data set. In our case, we will measure how well the linear model fits the data by calculating the coefficient of determination. If you have some familiarity with statistics, you might have learned that the coefficient of determination is the square of the correlation coefficient, r. But to determine the accuracy of any linear model, we have to extend this definition. According to Wikipedia, we can calculate the coefficient of determination by taking the sum of the squares of the difference between each y value and the overall average and the sum of the residual squared. Then you divide the two and subtract the quotient from one. The result basically tells you how much variation in the data is accounted for by the linear model. 
I carried out the same calculations in the evaluate method so that it can return the coefficient of determination every time we test our network. Speaking of testing, I changed the code so that if test data was not provided, it would be equal to the training data. And then down below, I evaluated the network on the test data after each epoch is completed. And that is pretty much it for the network class. To make data collection easier, I wrote another Python script called data retriever, which reads the XY coordinates from an Excel file and then generates the training data in the correct format. Finally, I can write my main script, which will make use of the network class and data retriever to simplify the coding process. The first thing we do is call getData to retrieve and store the necessary Excel data for training. Then we create a network object called net, which is instantiated with two neurons. After that, we get the size of the training data and then use that as the mini batch size. Usually training data is super large and processing it all at once would require a huge amount of computing power. So instead what we do is divide it into smaller mini batches, which the network uses separately to approximate its partial derivatives. However, for our basic demonstration, we don't have a large number of points, so the network should not have a problem with processing all of it in one go. At the end, I call SGD to start training the network for 50 epochs with a learning rate of 1.0. These hyperparameters are kind of arbitrary, but I just wanted to see how this would play out, and this is what happened after running my script for the first time. Okay, it turns out that my learning rate was too large and caused the network to overshoot with bigger jumps after each epoch, so I decreased this value and got the network to make smaller incremental improvements over time. Then I increased the number of epochs and reran the script until I got a coefficient of determination that was pretty close to 1. After that, I wrote a couple more lines of Python below to print out the final linear equation in slope-intercept form. Just for fun, I analyzed some data from a physics experiment I did in school about Hooke's law. For this data set, I retweaked the training hyperparameters, and when I run my script, I can see what the slope of the line is, which of course represents the spring constant. We can also take a look at how the linear model evolves over time. When the slope is close to zero, the y-intercept goes up to reduce the squares of the residuals, but when the slope starts to get larger, the y-intercept goes back down. This shows that while neural networks are remarkably versatile, they're not necessarily the most optimal solution to a given problem. Using neural networks for something like linear regression is really overkill, and there are formulas that already exist that can more reliably determine the least squares regression line. But as I've said before, this is all just a proof of concept that's meant to introduce neural networking basics at a starter level. So I hope you've learned something from this. As always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to post in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.